Hi there Smart Monkeys and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be looking at ratios and um, this was a requested video and I am going to be looking at the three different ways ratios can be asked and then teach you uh, the easiest ways of answering those types of questions. Um, yeah, as you'd know that ratios doesn't really fall under a specific topic. It is can be asked under any topic. So it's really more the method that you need to understand how to do as opposed to um, associating it with a specific topic. Right, so without further ado, let's jump in. All right, so this is your lesson on ratios. Right, so let's start by looking at the different types of questions okay so this section ratios is not a chapter it's not a topic okay so this section of ratios can be asked really in any topic so they can ask you it they can ask it to you in measurement they can ask it to you in maps they can ask it to you in any topic but essentially of all the types of questions they really can only ask you three types of questions okay and i'm going to teach you how to do those three types of questions so what you need to do is you need to then when you're reading a question paper identify what type of question it is and then use the appropriate method that i'm going to teach you okay so the different types of question that you can expect is you can you'll be asked to either simplify a ratio or you will be asked to increase and decrease ratios or you will be asked to divide into a ratio. So I'm going to show you now how to do all three. First, we'll start with simplifying ratios. And for each of this, I've used an example to show you actually how to do this calculation. So the question says, there are 30 cars in a parking lot, three Havals, 50 Nissans, and the rest Toyotas. Write the amount of Havals to Toyotas to Nissans in the form, and then they give you the ratio format, and simplify this ratio okay so the first thing that's important to note is how they are asking it because the order in which you give your answer matters so this question is saying Havals to Toyotas to Nissans so when you're giving your answers you have to give it in that specific order right so it's going to be Haval first then Toyota and then the Nissan now we have to write down the value of each so the Havals they say is 3 and the Nissans they say is 15 and they don't give you the, t the total of Toyotas, they just give you the total number of cars. So in order to find the Toyotas, you're going to take the total and subtract the values that you do have, which is minus, which is 30 minus the 50 Nissans and minus the 3 Havals. So essentially, the ratio is 3 is to 12 is to 15, right? So the order matters. But now the question is asking you to simplify this ratio. So what that means is you have to make sure that none of the values can really be divisible by the same number so if i look at this now i see that i can take three and i can divide all of these values by three and actually get a whole number right so when you are simplifying to know if it's simplified you can look at two values and see okay if there isn't a value that can be divided that both of them can be divided by to get a whole number then that means that that already is the simplified format. In this case, all values can be divided by 3. So here your answer in the simplified form will be 1 is to 4 is to 5. And that would be your final answer. So the important thing here, two things, is 1, making sure you give it in the correct order. And 2, making sure that you're dividing it by the highest number that can go into all the values in the ratio in order to find the simplified form. So that is simplifying ratios, and this is the one that I've seen in, in, in the final year papers that is the most, that's most common. Okay, but the other questions do get asked, so we're going to look at that. So the first one we're going to look at now is, the second one, sorry, we're going to look at now is increasing a ratio. And again, I've included an example to explain this to you. So, Oros is mixed in the ratio 1 is to 3 where one portion syrup is mixed to three portions water. Sorry, that's, that's supposed to say water. Right, Melissa has 15 liters of syrup. How much water does she require? Now, when you get a question like this, Great Wilds, the easiest method to use is my LVN method that I've taught you. 
right? And the LVN method says as follows. You start with the ratio, right? And then you look at what is it that they're giving you. So the ratio is 1 is to 3, where 1 represents the syrup and 3 represents the water. Okay? So the syrup is then 15 liters is what Melissa has. So I'm going to place this 15 under the 1 because that is represents the syrup. Then the LVN method says you always work anti-clockwise, dividing first and then multiplying. So you will go 3 divided by 1, multiplied by 15, and your answer is 45. So that means that if you have 15 liters of syrup, you then need 45 liters of water to be able to make this uh, correctly. Right? Now what I want you to notice here is this is actually the opposite of what we did in the first way that I told you, where we simplify. If you look at this, 15 is to 45. If I simplify this, I will divide both of them by 15, and the simplified form is then 1 is to 3. So increasing and decreasing ratios is actually the opposite. But how do we know when it's an increase in the ratio? Is when the answer is actually bigger, has increased from the initial value that's being asked in the question. Okay, now let's have a look at decreasing ratio and you'll see that the same method applies. Right, so Amy used 36 liters of water. How much syrup does she require? Okay, so again, I start with the ratio and this time they're giving me 36 liters of water. So the 3 represents the water, so I'm going to place the 36 under the 3. And then the LVN method says, Anti-clockwise, divide first, then multiply. So my answer will be 12. So for 36 liters of water, you need 12 liters of syrup. Again, if I look at the answers, I've got 12 is to 36. This, if I simplify it, will give me 1 is to 3. Right? And how do I know that this is a decreased ratio? Is because my 12 is less than the 36. Okay, so you must just be able to identify what of the different types of questions they are actually asking you. Right, the last type of question is dividing into a ratio. And in this question, this is sort of the one that would count the most marks of all of these methods. And this can be included in finance, this can be included in measurement, any of those topics. Okay, so I'm going to work through this slowly so that you can actually understand and the methods that I've used might not be the quickest method, but it's a method that can make you understand this the best. Okay, so let's read the example. Melissa, Pete, and John start a project and invest 10,000 Rand, 15,000, and 35,000 Rand, respectively. Now, respectively in a, a test question means in that same, in that order. Okay. So, respectively, they've invested 10,000. So, Melissa is 10,000. Pete, 15,000, and John invested 35,000, so in this order. The project makes a profit of 25,000 rand, right? Which they divide among them proportionally based on the investment. So proportionally means if they gave more, then they are going to get more of the profit, right? If they gave less, they're going to get less of the profit. So based on how much you gave will determine how much you, you get, right? So the question wants to know how much more of the profit does John get than Melissa? Okay, so that's the question. So the way you're going to answer this question, and whenever you have to divide into a ratio, is you're going to start by finding the simplified ratio. So that is from method, the first method that I taught you. So we write down what is the simply what is the ratio given? In this right order, so it's 10,000, 15,000, and 35,000, right? And if we simplify this, means we take this numbers and we see what is the biggest number that can go into all three. And in this case, it's 5,000. So it's divided by 5,000, and then my simplified ratio will then be 2 is to 3 is to 7, right? So that's step number one. That's exactly the same as the first method I taught you, so you shouldn't have any issues with that. Now we move to step number two, which is find the total portion. Now what the total portion means is if Melissa is contributing two portions, Pete is contributing three portions, and John is contributing seven portions, then together they are contributing 12 portions. 
Okay, so you're actually just adding all the values in the ratio together. Step number three, find Melissa's portion of the profit, right? Because you want to know how much more does John get. So you're first going to find Melissa's portion, you're going to find John's portion, and you're going to subtract the two. So in order to find Melissa's portion, right, you are going to say there are 12 portions in total, and Melissa gave two of those 12 portions. So you're going to say 2 over the 12 multiplied by the profit that needs to be divided. So that means that Melissa will then get 4,166 um, rand and 67 cents. That is how much of the 25,000 rand profit she's going to get. Right? Then if I look at John, find John's portion of the profit. He now contributed 7 of the 12 portions, right? So 7 of the 12 portions multiplied by the profit. So how much he's going to get of the 25,000 is 14,583 and 33 cents. So in order for you to find out the difference between the two, you're then going to calculate the difference by saying John's portion minus Melissa's portion. And that means that John gets 10,416 and 66 cents more than what Melissa gets. Okay, so a couple of things here. One, when you're dividing into a ratio, it's important that you work, find the simplified ratio, right? And then find the total portion. Then whatever portions they want you to calculate, that is the values that you're going to use when you are calculating those different portions. If this question just asked how much should each of them get, then you would have just left the step five out and just done a step five calculating Pete's portion, which is three of the 12 times the profit. Okay, so this is essentially how you would divide into a ratio. So this is the ratio, and I'm going to divide 25,000 into each of this, and that means it will give me this total, this total and then the third total would have been Pete's total but because the question doesn't require us to calculate that we would leave it out right so we've learned in this lesson how to simplify ratios how to increase and decrease ratios and then also how to divide into ratios so there's that video i hope you find it helpful and if you like it please give it a thumbs up um, if you have any questions add it in the comment section it's really nice to get some feedback from you guys on um, how you're finding the videos, but also what you need from me if you have any recommendations for future videos. I also offer revision classes uh, before the June exams, preliminary exams, and final exams that you can apply for by emailing uh, mathsmonkeyhelp at gmail.com, and then I will just send you all the information that you need in order to apply for those classes. All right, so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.